Hi, I'm Kelly with the Element 14 community. Since its introduction on Leap Day of 2012, the Raspberry Pi has been touted as the $35 credit card size computer. There have been several versions of the Pi released since then, but the most recent version, the Raspberry Pi 3, is still $35 and it's still credit card size. Its original purpose was to be an affordable platform for learning how to code. So in this video, we're going to show you everything you need to get it set up and running, connected to the peripherals, and getting online. If you want to follow along, here's what you'll need. The Raspberry Pi 3, the Noobs card, the 2.5 amp power adapter, which is new for the Pi 3, a monitor, a mouse, a keyboard, and of course, the Pi case. Even though the Raspberry Pi is only a little over 3 inches by 2 inches, it has all the components of your typical computer. This is the chip, a quad-core 64-bit ARM Cortex A53 processor running at 1.2 gigahertz. That's about 50% faster than the Pi 2. Right here is the 2.5 amp micro USB power input. Here's a full-size HDMI output. This is a 3.5 millimeter jack for audio video output. Right here is the CSI port for hooking up your Pi camera. This is the DSI port. Right here we have 40 GPIO pins. We'll talk about those later. On this side, we've got the Ethernet and four USB 2.0 connectors. On this side, we have the built-in chip antenna, which connects to the built-in Wi-Fi on the back of the board. Also on the back of the board, we have your SD slot for the micro SD card. Before I set up the Pi 3, let's put it in its case to protect it. The case has been newly designed and comes in five parts. A lid, a top, two sides, and the bottom. The bottom has a cutout for the micro SD card. So when you put the Pi into the case, make sure that you give it a little angle so the SD card fits through. That's convenient in case you want to use different SD cards as you use your Pi. Also make sure that the four standoffs on the bottom of the board line up to the through holes on the Raspberry Pi. Next we'll put on the top. The top is cut to accommodate the Ethernet and the four USB ports, and it snaps on just like this. Next we'll put the sides on. One side is open so that you can have access to your GPIO pins. The side snaps on like this. The other side has cutouts for your power, your HDMI out, and your 3.5 millimeter jack. Finally, we'll put on the top. And there you have a very protected Pi. The first thing I'm going to do is hook up the keyboard, the mouse, and the monitor. So right here I've got a wired keyboard and mouse that have used USB connectors. And I'm going to connect those right into two of the USB ports on the Pi and I'll still have two ports open for other accessories. The next thing I'm going to do is take an HDMI cable and plug it into the HDMI out here on the side of the Pi. Now hopefully you'll have an HDMI monitor like I do and you can just plug the other end right into the back of the monitor. If you don't and you have a DVI monitor, which connectors look like this, then you might want an adapter like this that goes from HDMI to DVI. But remember, HDMI carries audio and video output, whereas DVI would only carry the video. Likewise, if you have an older monitor that only has VGA with a connector cord like this, then you're going to want to get a Pi View adapter. This connects right into the HDMI port on the side of the Pi and into your existing VGA cords. Now let's talk about the SD card. For this video, I'm using a pre-formatted 16 gigabyte micro SD card that's preloaded with our new out-of-the-box software called Noobs. Noobs makes setting up a Pi so much easier. It allows you to install, remove, and reinstall various flavors of the Linux operating system via an easy-to-use GUI. The regular operating system, or the most preferred, is Raspbian, an open-source Debian Linux OS. And that's the one we'll install today. So let's take the micro SD out of the adapter and we'll put it in to the bottom of the Raspberry Pi. 
Now, let's make sure that the copper connectors are facing the top of the pie box. And we'll line it up and push it in. You won't hear a click. This is a friction fit instead of a click in or click out. And now it's properly seated and we're ready to power up. A new power adapter was designed for the Pi 3 that can handle up to 2.5 amps. So you can plug in and power all of your peripherals directly from the Pi. The Pi power adapter comes with a variety of heads so you can travel internationally with your Pi or just simply select the head that works in your region. There's the US version, I'll plug that in. Now, the Pi doesn't have an on-off switch, so when I plug this in, it'll power up. Let's see what happens. First, you'll see a multicolor screen, then an installation window will appear. Mouse over and select the Raspbian OS and click Install. You'll get a warning that says, you are ready to install Raspbian and all data on your micro SD card will be overwritten. Click Yes to begin the installation. Next, you'll see a new window labeled Extracting File System and a progress bar at the bottom. After the installation, you'll be able to configure the Pi 3 for your time zone and country from the drop-down menu on the desktop. The installation takes a while. It took me about 25 minutes. During the install, you'll see various informational messages about programming languages, applications, and the Raspbian OS. If you're a beginner, these messages are very useful. The Pi 3 is loaded with all kinds of helpful tools, applications, and games. After the install is complete, you'll see a small window that says, the OS is installed successfully. Click OK, and the Pi 3 will begin rebooting. You'll see the monitor go dark, then the scrolling text will appear. Once the system is booted up, you will see the Raspbian desktop with the big Raspberry Pi logo in the center. There will be a menu bar at the top. The menu button with the small Raspberry Pi logo in the upper left of the screen is where you can access all of the programming languages, tools, file manager, office type applications, accessories, and more. The next thing you want to do is configure the Pi 3 to your local time, country, and area. In the past, this was done using the command sudo raspi-config to open the Raspberry Pi configuration tool, but the Pi 3 is much easier to configure. Just go to the Preferences in the drop-down menu. Click on Preferences and a window will open. There you can click on Localization and set your locale, language, country, time zone, and keyboard. Finally, select your Wi-Fi country. After making these changes, click OK. You will see a window asking if you would like to reboot. Click Yes. The screen will turn black and then the scrolling text will appear again. After a few minutes, you'll see the Raspbian desktop that's been updated with your configuration changes. Getting online is incredibly easy with the Pi 3. You don't need a dongle or an Ethernet cable. There's literally no setup required. Go to the top right of the menu bar. You'll see the network icon. Click on it and a drop-down list of available wireless networks will be displayed. Select one you know the password for and enter the password to connect. The icon will turn into radiated waves to show that you are connected. And that's it. Then open a browser from the drop-down menu on the left and you're ready to go. That's all for this video. Check back often as we'll be releasing more videos and tips to help you get started with your Raspberry Pi 3. Thanks for watching.